G'day folks, welcome to another Cyclone Chaser Cyclone video update. Today, the 18th of February 2016, my name is Chris Nitzo. This update sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia. When measurements matter, folks, at the moment what we are watching just uh, with a half open eye is an ex-tropical cyclone Tatiana. You can see it moving here in a northerly direction. There's not much to it. Uh, there's very little in terms of its surface circulation has started to unravel. Uh, we don't expect this to re-intensify. However, we will just keep an eye on it just in case it does pop up here around the Solomons and pop into this much stronger monsoonal flow located around the Solomon Islands and east towards Fiji. Now, further to the east towards Tonga, we have Tropical Cyclone Winston, a severe tropical cyclone, tracking away to the west under the influence of a mid-level ridge underneath it. Now, the thought was around about uh, five or six days ago that uh, Tropical Cyclone Winston may have even been able to push as far west as Australia. It's no longer the case and hasn't been the case now for about three or four days. Since Tropical Cyclone Winston passed around about the 180 degree mark, which is just west of what you can see on your screen, that probability or possibility became almost a an impossibility that was pretty well its magical marker around that 180 degree east mark now it's too far to the east too far gone away for us but it will still pose a threat to or it could still pose a threat to the main islands of fiji so we're talking the townships of suva and nard Joint Typhoon Warning Centre has weakened it over the over the course of the day and it does look quite uh, ordinary in terms of its the largeness of its eye and the convective structure around it but it is set to become a little bit conditions are set to become a little bit more favorable and so the possibility of reintensification definitely exists as the system pushes to the west here you can see it does a sharp recurve around that nadi suva area now it uh, it is really touch and go folks as to whether this will actually impact the main island as a category four or five uh, tropical cyclone or at least a three anyway uh, before starting to duck south or whether it'll duck south a little earlier than forecast uh, and be a bit more of a threat to Tonga I guess um, rather than these really populated islands here of Fiji so this this one Nadi and Suva have approximately together about 120,000 people that will be directly impacted should a very strong tropical cyclone push over that island so it's not good news at all especially considering that pretty well all computer models are now starting to trend further and further to the west with each model run and you can see on the strike probabilities here thanks to NOAA you can see just how close everything is uh, to affecting Nadi and Suva directly so you can see the computer model forecasts about a about uh, 50 to 100 kilometers to the east of those regions so uh, it is really really touch and go very much a wait and see scenario here for the main island I'm sure they would be starting preparations in case the more westerly solutions came off look the European is probably the only model in general that's pushing all these western outliers back to the east uh, the other models are starting to trend a little bit further to the west so uh, there's a fair bet here that uh, this area here is going to be impacted very strongly from the tropical cyclone Winston in around about two to three days time we can see an intensification is expected over the coming 24 hours and then a maintenance and then another intensification in a couple of days time as it approaches the main island of Fiji so that's not very good news at all with central pressures down around the 930 to 940 hectopascals we're probably looking at a category 4 system here as it approaches those islands all right leaving the Fijian situation now because this is an Aussie weather update or an Aussie cyclone update we can see there's absolutely no sign of Aussie cyclones anywhere near Australia at the moment we've got a trough system across inland parts of Australia developing scattered showers and thunderstorms in that area scattered showers and thunderstorms developing also in the top end region of the territory and also this nice little cluster of storms that popped up here around the Karatha Onslow area uh, today as we move over to the east around Queensland we've got isolated showers and thunderstorms developing just inland of the coast there as well as some isolated activity developing in the Gulf country region we also have some slightly more scattered activity up here in the far northern peninsula but look that's all an abysmal sight at the moment compared to what we should be seeing this time in february you can see our ex tropical cyclone tatiana here moving away to the north northeast as well 
When we track through, X Tatiana here you can see probably remains a feature for another 24 to 48 hours and then will weaken out completely and just be absorbed in the monsoonal trough up here around the Solomon Islands. Uh, if, if it does develop indeed, it will move to the southeast. There's very little doubt about that. Now along the Queensland coast, we're going to see uh, showers quite scattered at times on that southeast, fairly strong ridge developing in between that high and the monsoon up here in the Solomon. So we should see a fairly fresh easterly flow, creating a fair amount of shower activity across the coast there. And you can see that's expected to continue out to about days four and five. No sign of any other developments up here in the north at the moment. However, there is just the hint of the possibility of a weak low developing up around the Torres Strait to Gulf of Papua region. Now, if that did indeed develop, the most likely scenario is that it would push west across the Arafura Sea and then west-southwest in the longer term. And obviously, in that situation, in about uh, you know 10 to 15 days' time, we would need to keep an eye on this region. So looking at the ensemble rain probabilities over the next 10 days, you can certainly see those coastal showers in Queensland beginning to, to pull, pull on or push a reasonable amount of shower activity through the coastline, which is resulting in, once again, reasonable amounts of rain developing along the north tropical coast region over the next 10 days. You're looking at falls there of 100 plus millimetres. Now, I'm saying reasonable but still well below average in terms of what we would be expecting in February. And you can see that only parts of the coast will receive them, and they're the most favourable parts, which are the Whitsundays to Mackay area, uh, and then also from around about Ingham northwards through to uh, around about Port Douglas would be the the main beneficiaries of any rainfall that did occur on that southeasterly stream. You can also see the northern parts of the peninsula expecting a little bit of enhanced weather, and that could be the result of a couple of computer models predicting a very weak circulation developing up in that area. As we fast forward now to the 16-day time frame, so over the next 16 days, see where the rain's going to fall. You can see in general we're looking at a very similar pattern here that over the next 16 days the only places in Queensland that are going to see meaningful rainfall expected to be on that exposed coastline. We may start to see an increase in rainfall by days 10 to 16 up here in the North Peninsula, but that will depend heavily on whether or not a tropical low does form in the area. There are no signs of a strong monsoonal incursion at this stage out to the early part of March. So looking at the precipitation anomaly, so this is how much above or below average you can expect over this week. So for instance, if you were averaging 400 millimetres for this month, you'd expect about 100 mils a week. So if you have a negative 60 here, it means you're probably only going to see somewhere around the 40 millimetres for that week. Now, what we can see here on the north tropical coast region, there is this area of green. So it does look like there's going to be an enhancement of weather here on the north tropical coast region, uh, maybe just off the coast or just on the coast. It's too hard to tell at the moment. But once again, it's that exposed coastline there. So it's going to be very isolated and patchy, uh, that, that heavier type of rainfall. Across most of northern Australia, it's going to be pretty dull and boring over the next seven days. As we go into days 8 to 14, uh, we can see pretty dull and boring right across northern Australia once again. Very much below average weather or below average rainfall expected. So pretty rubbish southeast pattern that we're in across most of the eastern half and dry easterlies across most of the western half. One thing I failed to mention a little bit earlier is the possibility of some fairly active thunderstorm activity across the southeastern parts of Queensland as well, uh, developing on Friday. So just something to be aware of, of course. As we go to Saturday, you can still see that, active act that, that activity occurring here over the southeast. However, it does start to decline. And as we go to Sunday, and then more importantly, Monday, we see those very heavy uh, showers developing along that north tropical coastline of Queensland and the central coast of Queensland here as well. So definitely something to look forward to if you live in those little pockets of the state. But other than that, it's pretty dull and boring if you live anywhere else in the northern half of the nation. The accumulated rainfalls, as we've always, uh, as we've just said, looking at the GFS ensemble, we can see here that the north tropical coast of Queensland uh, could be looking at places up to about 200 millimetres of rain over the coming uh, over the coming week. So that's certainly worthwhile rainfall across that region, albeit nothing above what we would normally expect anyway for this time of year. And also the Northern Territory region 
possibly looking at an increase in shower and thunderstorm activity between days five and eight as well. So that's it, folks. That's all we've got. Thanks for watching, and I'll have another update for you next Tuesday. Keep an eye on our OCC Facebook page for updates as to how Winston is going. There won't be any videos on it because it won't be affecting Australia, but just keep an eye on how things are affect how things are progressing over at Fiji. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll talk to you next Thursday.